uh, going to film the edition? Oh, it's already in. It's already oh, on. Got it. Figured they'd want to see the... Uh... See it turning bright orange, starting to liquefy a little bit. It's been about two or three minutes since the initial mixing of the solids. All right, so we're back here about three minutes later, and we're now, uh, that orange liquid is now turning back into orange sticky solid. A little harder to work with there. So Dr. Riley, why is that so bright orange? Well, if you go back to the intro and look at the imine that's formed, um, it is conjugated with both of the arenes on either side of it. And what we learned about is that uh, a more conjugated system um, absorbs light of a longer wavelength, um, and it often makes them visually um, colored. So um, yeah, but you can see it's uh, really becoming a nice solid now. And uh, we'll be back with you soon. So here we have the imine, it's nice and solid. You can see it's free flowing and now we're gonna add our ethanol to that and stir it to somewhat dissolve that solid and then we're gonna add our sodium borohydride. So we've got the reaction stirring on a stir plate here and I'm going to incrementally Add the sodium borohydride. Add it in a little bit at a time. Enough. We're still going to add it. We're going to keep adding uh, and we'll shoot it again when something has changed. You can see the solution's already getting uh, more yellowish compared to the dark orange um, as the sodium borohydride reacts. Um, remember, sodium borohydride is NaBH4, and uh, that means that there are four equivalents of H minus for every. Um, one sodium borohydride molecule, so um, that's something to uh, consider when you're thinking about your how the quantities relate to one another. All right, so see it's getting a lot lighter. There's still a little bit of orange in the middle, but um, light. It's it's not entirely. Uh, yeah, it's getting lighter. It's getting lighter. All right, we're getting near the end here. I'm just going in with a stirring rod and breaking up some of the bigger chunks. Increase the surface area for the reaction to occur. We're waiting on all that orange color to go away. As if you recall, the orange color is the color of the imine. And as far as the color loss, of course, we're reducing that double bond between the carbon and nitrogen to a single bond, and that disrupts the conjugation between the two uh, molecular subunits of the, of the product. All right, in the next part of the procedure, we're instructed to add two milliliters of acetic acid, followed by two milliliters of acetic anhydride, and then a boiling chip, and then to heat it on a steam bath. Uh, the steam bath is in the hood, that gets a little noisy, so we're gonna stop the video, we'll add the two milliliters of each chemical, and then we'll restart the video once we're in the hood on the steam bath. You can see it there, the vigorous bubbling taking place on the initial addition of the acetic acid, that's the quenching of the excess sodium borohydride. We've now added both of the reagents, you can see what it looks like, and we're about to take it over to the steam bath. We are now on the steam bath, it might be a little harder to hear, uh, but the steam bath is heating it uh, for 5 to 10 minutes, so we'll see the next step in a minute. Here we are after the heating on the steam bath, we're back out in the lab on top of the stir plate. Uh, procedure at this point says to uh, slowly add 75 milliliters of water with rapid stirring. So 
So we're still adding it slowly. Yep. You can see with the addition there, the big uh, white cloud that happens. So if we add the water, of course the solution becomes less hospitable to a large organic molecule and it starts to precipitate out. We've moved on to the next part of the procedure. It says to cool it to zero degrees. So we got a nice big beaker with ice in it and ice water. And we put ours inside of that. So give that a little time while we set up our suction filtration apparatus. All right. So we've cooled our thing. We got a, a clear-ish solution. But you can see, especially on the bottom, there's, oh, geez, I just spilled some on the, on the bench. Not a lot, though. And it was just the liquid. And we're collecting the solid. So... Not a big deal. Um, so we are now going to do suction filtration. So I collect that solid. Let me see if I can get a nice view of the top of that guy. I'm gonna scrape some of this solid that's left over out, and then we'll we'll get to another shot. All right, so you can see we got quite a bit of solid in there. Um, now we will be uh, trying to purify that solid more. You can see it's a little uh, discolored, so hopefully after recrystallization, it may be even more um, white. We'll see. All right, all right, we did our filtration. We got this white solid out looks pretty nice um, now we are moving on to the recrystallization dr peterson is heating up the hexanes Cyclops. the cyclohexane yep. to uh, do the recrystallization and uh, we'll be looking at some of that all right we're gonna get the uh, recrystallization going here we got our solid in the earlier our uh, cyclohexane is heating up there we're gonna add a little bit of the warm cyclohexane get some liquid in this Erlmeyer flask with our product set that on there. Recall we want to add the minimum amount of boiling solvent to just get our solid to dissolve. And once it's all dissolved, we'll take it off and let it cool slowly room temperature. And then we'll pop it into an ice bath to further cool. And once we get to that point, we will let you know what we find. All right, we've added um this is a very rough estimate of how much, but around 100 mils of cyclohexane. And you can see after it's boiled, it is now fully in solution. Yep. Um, Starting to see a few small uh, whitish crystals form on the bottom of the flask. We're going to let it cool slowly to room temperature, and then we'll pop it in an ice bath and get ready for a suction filtration. All right, we've uh, cooled our cyclohexane um, with our product in there. We have them here. Um, nice white solid. I should go to that. Um, we cooled some more cyclohexane down to be able to uh, uh, wash the product with that to, get, to make sure we get it out of the um, Erlenmeyer flask. Um, so we will uh, um, be, be pouring it through the filter uh, right about now. All right, here we go. We are getting through here. And uh, I'm going to go back in here and scrape out some of this solid that is still on the side right there. Um, and we'll get all of it in there, but you can see already that there's quite a bit of white solid on top of that filter and it's a lot more uh, it's, it's more white. It's not an off-white like it was previously. And we've completed getting all of the material into the suction filtration um, apparatus. Uh, you can see there's a good amount of white solid on that filter. Um, so at this point we're going to be scraping it into a pre-teared pre beaker and we're going to use that uh, drying oven to uh, make sure our material is ready for characterization. Uh, we have our pre-weighed, uh, pre-teared uh, Erlenmeyer flask here. 
our white solid on the bottom. Um, looks like we have a pretty good amount. Um, so now we're putting that into the drying oven. Um, so here's our final product. It is dried. Um, and uh, on the beaker, you can see the original tear weight of the beaker and the weight of the beaker with our dry product in there. Um, so that should give you a good um, feel for how much we made. Yep. So get the mass of the final product from that. And we're going to prep a melting point sample and take a quick melting point of it. They got their big fatty yields. Ooh, wow, it just like actually focused really well. Yeah, I think I can see it melting from here. <laughs>